Stanley versus Weber and Olsies, PC, Michael Olsies, Suzanne Barda, Michael Kirschenheider, Jeffrey Werber, and Sandra Francis individually, which really should have been entitled a third party. Your appearance. Good morning, Judge McNally. Suzanne Barda, P65425, on behalf of Bank of America. Your name, sir? I, Patrick Shanley, and before this court, a special appearance. Hang on. Without waiving on. any rights, remedies, Mr. or Shanley. defenses. Mr. Shanley. I am not waiving defects of services, nor am I submitting to the jurisdiction of the court or the alleged plaintiff in this cover of law action. I didn't ask you that. I, I reserve you. all my God given rights. I waive. Let me let you in on the secret. I'm going to listen to you, but I'm not going to play games. I asked you for your appearance. I read your briefs, period. I didn't ask you to go on like that. Don't do it again. But you can proceed on your motion to dismiss counterclaim. Congratulations, Mr. Shannon. That's the first time I've used that goal in years. Go ahead. Your Honor, I'm hoping this, this ends today. There are two motions before you. Um, one is to quash the matter against Weber and Olsies and the five named defendants uh, from my office. I believe the last time you were here, Brother Counsel, Mr. Werber that was here, uh, he advised me that, that you told Mr. Shanley that he needs to hire an attorney um, because he was treading on some, some dangerous um, water. Um, and he hasn't fought, he has not hired an, an attorney. Well, I didn't say he needed to. I strongly suggested yes, that he do that. Because he was treading on some dangerous water and the claims that he's making. Um, we're asking for the matter before Weber and all season five named attorneys to be dismissed at this time, Your Honor. Um, Let's take, if you don't mind, I'd like to take the motion to dismiss the counterclaim first that was filed. And I understand there could be reason for confusion. Your office filed two separate motions. You filed a motion to dismiss the counterclaim, which focused on the claim that Mr. Shanley has against Bank of America as Bank of America being counter defendant. And then you file the motion to quash summons and dismiss 30 third party defendants on the claim that Mr. Shanley has on the, against the law firm Weber and OC's PC, PLC, which really should have been, as you know, a, a third party complaint. And then as against the individual lawyers that I already mentioned, uh, uh, which would include yourself, Michael Olsies, Michael Kirschenheider, Jeffrey Werber, and Sandra Francis. So let's proceed first. I object. You can object all you want. Let's proceed with the motion to dismiss counterclaim. I object. We're I'm telling him I want him to argue that one first, Mr. Shanley. What is what are you objecting about besides the fact you just want to get loud? I I I have my affidavit before you, the paperwork. That's that's what matters in this case. Mr. Shanley, I have two motions. I'm going to listen to what you have to say. I'm telling him I want him to first proceed with his motion to dismiss the counterclaim that they filed pertaining to your claim against Bank of America. Then after that is argued by both parties, he can go on to the motion to quash the summons and, and dismiss the third party uh, purported counter defendants or third party defendants, both the law firm as well as the uh, individual defendants. That's all I'm saying, sir. There's no reason to object about anything here. And by the way, Mr. Barta, on your motion to quash the summons and dismiss all third party defendants, you have an attachment The verification of debt is attached to your motion is set forth. It appears on exhibit one. 
and it is unsigned. And I, it looks like it was going to be, at least my copy that was provided to me is unsigned. I'm talking about the verification of debt that appears was going to be signed by somebody from Bank of America. Do you have an executed copy? No, Your Honor. They would not execute that copy. That was provided for by Mr. Shanley. I see. That's an affidavit that he provided that he wanted signed I by see. Bank of America. I misunderstood. Go with your motion. Your Honor, our motion, we're going to rely on our, our written brief. However, I'm going to make it very short. It, he solely relies on that verification was not met by Bank of America, but Bank of America did validate. I object. He, he can't sir, speak for a sir, fiction. Sir, this is a courtroom and we show one another courtesy. You, you will have an opportunity to respond to whatever he has to say when he's done, okay? Be glad to give you all the time you need. Go ahead. Your Honor, Bank of America is not considered a debt collector. And the FDCPA only pertains to debt collection companies. So the FDCPA does not apply to Bank of America. And his sole claim is that there's a violation of the FDCPA. But if Bank of America were deemed to be a debt collector, they still verified the debt to Mr. Shanley and sent all relative documentation. The fact that they did not provide Mr. Shanley what he believes they should have given him is not a violation in, a, in and of itself as well. So, and that's his sole, that's the sole reason he filed his counterclaim against Bank of, Bank of America. And it just does not hold water at this time. Give me one second. I need to. All right, Mr. Shanley, your response. Have you read my affidavit, sir? I'm not a witness. I'm the judge. Of course, I've read everything in this brief. Everything I have to say is in my paperwork in there. So here's what I'm left with. On July 21 of 20, it appears to the court that the defendant counter plaintiff entered into a contract with, with plaintiff counter defendant Bank of America. Bank of America provided credit to Mr. Shanley. Defendant made, defendant counter plaintiff made some payments thereon. That forms the basis of a contract. They do not have to produce or provide a written contract. A contract is formed when in the line of, when, when in a credit card situation, somebody utilizes the card. That is when the contract is formed between the parties. On December 5, 22, Bank of America initiated an action against the defendant counter plaintiff. Defendant filed a responsive pleading and a counter claim against Bank of America. The counter claim alleges violation of the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, FDCPA. Also, the claim is that Bank of America failed to validate the account. Court is going to rule in favor of Bank of America and dismiss the plaintiff's counter, the plaintiff's, I'm sorry, the defendant slash counter plaintiff's counter claim versus Bank of America for the following reasons. 
Bank of America is a creditor. They are not a debt collector and they're not subject to the FDCPA. Therefore, as such, we fail to state a claim upon which relief can be granted and their motion is granted pursuant to MCR 2.116C8. Moreover, there's documentation attached to the counter defendant's response that indicates that, that Mr. Um, one of the lawyers, I will find that in a moment, find that one of the lawyers did in fact send, I'm talking about from the Weber OC's law firm, did in fact send in return a document that would, would have satisfied validation of the debt. Therefore, pursuant to MCR 2.116C8 and C10, counter defendant, Bank of America, is entitled to a summary disposition. And again, on the basis that the counter plaintiff failed to state a claim upon which relief could be granted against this particular party and or there's no genuine issue as to any material facts. So I'm granting that motion to dismiss the counterclaim. Now, you can proceed with your motion to dismiss the law firm as well as the individual defendants. Your Honor, that matter, I believe, is in practicing law for, for 20 years is is has never been done before. It's the first time. It's very frivolous. Uh, there is no cause of action against Robert Olsies, Michael Olsies, Cezanne Barda, Mike Kirschenheider, Jeffrey Werber, and Sandra Francis. Um, and we're relying on that written brief as well. However, we're not only asking for an order dismissing the case against all third party defendants with prejudice, we're also asking uh, for sanctions. It's okay. okay. Go ahead, I'm sorry. So okay. we're also asking for sanctions, Your Honor. Um, well, I'm not gonna get the sh sanctions unless and until I rule in your favor on this. Do you have any response? You can continue. If you no, I mean the only thing I, I would say, Your Honor, is validation uh, took place again. I think that's a sole source is that there's a violation of the FDCPA. Um, the the validation requested on his documents has a different file number because there's a second case. Um, so we're not even talking about uh, Mr. Shanley's request for validation on this particular case. He put a different file number on it. And that case is coming down the pipeline. Um, but as to this case, uh, <laughs> I'm asking your honor to, to please rule in our favor and put an end to this. We put a lot of time and effort responding to this frivolous action. Do you have any response? Your honor, I've submitted my affidavit, which rebutted their Bank of America. My, my paperwork reads for itself. All that other stuff was, was hearsay. I have this affidavit. Are they going to rebut my affidavit? Okay. Do you have any response to that, counsel? Uh, no, Your Honor. Your affidavit talks about being, an, you're not an artificial person. Affidavit of status of Patrick Allen Shanley, right? What are, what are they supposed to rebut in here? If they, are you ref, you're referring to your to the affidavit attached to your motion to dismiss, supported by affidavit of that Patrick yes. Shanley? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, uh, you guys can have a seat. 
again, on this case, motion to quash summons and dismiss all third party defendants. Court finds that on July 21 of 20, defendant and plaintiff entered into a contract. The plaintiff provided credit. Defendant paid some of the monies due and owing on the credit card debt, but defaulted. On December 5, 22, plaintiff initiated an action. Defendant filed a responsive pleading, a counterclaim, and named all lawyers as third party defendants, actually as counter defendants, but it should have been, they should have been properly named as third party defendants. The plaintiff, Bank of America, or I should say, in this case, the motion filed by defendant law firm and defendant lawyer, and defendant lawyers claims that the defendant, Mr. Shanley, did not file a third party complaint as required pursuant to MCR 2.204. They allege that the addition of the third party defendants in the counterclaim violates 2.110C as only a cross claim or counterclaim can be filed with an answer. And they further claim that 2.204 requires a separate third party claim. In addition, they claim that Mr. Shanley's counterclaim against the law firm of Weber and Olseas and against the individual defendant lawyers is without merit. They claim that the asserted claims do not show a violation of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act because, number one, he did not send a request, Mr. Shanley did, for validation to the individual third party defendants. That it was only sent to the law firm of Weber and Olseas. Second, that as it relates to the law firm of Weber and Olseas, that a letter was sent with supporting documentation thereby validating the account. That is the claim. And I will just say this. To begin with, defendant's third party complaint was filed improperly. Initiation of an action against the law firm of Weber and Olseas PC and individual attorneys with that firm should have been filed as a third party complaint. Neither the law firm Weber and Olseas PLC nor the named individuals were parties to the principal complaint and therefore the pleading should have been filed as a third party complaint naming the law firm itself, Weber and Olseas PLC, as well as individual defendants, Michael Olseas, Suzanne Varda, Michael Kirshenheider, Jeffrey Werber and Sandra Francis as third party defendants. Make no mistake about it though, the court would gladly permit, and I read Mr. Shanley's brief with regard to how pro se litigants should in essence have rules construed more liberally in their favor. So that if there's a technical violation of the court rules or a technical violation of filing of certain pleadings, that the court should permit it. And I have no difficulty permitting Mr. Shanley to file a third party complaint in the proper form as against Weber and Olseas PLC and or against the individual defendants. However, the court must make a determination in fairness as to whether or not such a claim should be and could be possibly successful if the court were to allow somebody to file, in this case, Mr. Shanley to file a third party complaint. There is no evidence 
that defendant sent a request to the individual attorneys. No evidence whatsoever that's, that would have required them individually to validate the debt to conform to the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act. There's no evidence at all anywhere that I saw in any documentation, which leads the court to believe that Mr. Shanley or somebody on his behalf sent a request to the individual attorneys. There is evidence that it was sent to the law firm of Weber and Will Cease. There is evidence that the law firm of Weber and Will Cease, PC, responded <clears throat> to that request for validation. There's no evidence that the validation documentation submitted was invalid under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. I've told you, Mr. Shanley, they don't have to produce a contract. They don't have to produce a written contract. When you use the credit card, the contract is formed, period, plain, simple. And then you're subject to the terms and conditions of the credit card agreement. In this case, first, as I said, there's no evidence that an individual letter was sent to the firm of, of uh, I'm sorry, to the individual lawyers. Therefore, they weren't subject to the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act. Therefore, I'm granting summary disposition in their favor. In quashing the summons and dismissing the third party or the counterclaim filed against them. Moreover, Weber and OCs, who would have been subject to the validation language of the FDCPA because they were specifically sent a request, responded. There's no genuine issue as to any material fact here. There's no specific facts that the counter plaintiff has come forth with to establish a factual issue as to whether or not there was a violation. So therefore, defendants, third part, I'm gonna say counter defendants, Weber and OLCs, Michael Olsis, Suzanne Barda, Michael Kirschenheider, Jeffrey Werber, and Sandra Francis are granted summary disposition. The summons is quashed, and the third party complaint slash counter complaint is dismissed. Now, that concludes this hearing. You wanted to move for sanctions. What do you have to say about that? Your Honor, other than the time and effort that has been put into this matter in responding, um, there's another case coming down the pipeline. I don't know if Mr. Shammy has been served with that case. It's another Bank of America case. Um, if you do not award sanctions of any kind, then uh, I don't believe it would be fair for the attorneys in my law firm and Weber and Olsies to have to put additional time and effort on the next case. So I believe it's imperative that, that you grant the sanctions at this time um, so that this doesn't happen again. Thank you. Mr. Shanley. Your Honor, the last time I was here, you lectured me on that I should get a lawyer, get a lawyer and pro se. OK, I'm not doing this pro se. I'm not representing myself. I am myself. Mm. I have an affidavit there that rebuts Bank of America's claim. It's, 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 it's in my paperwork. I was trying to do you a favor, Mr. Shanley. I was trying to tell you, please consult with a lawyer so you don't proceed with lawsuits that are frivolous in nature and force the court to do something that I don't want to do. That's what my purpose was in telling you that you should get an attorney. 
you have every right to represent yourself, whether it's a $5 lawsuit or you're representing yourself because you're charged with a ser serious felony. Every defendant, every party in this country has the right to represent themselves, just like I have the right to give myself a root canal. I have the right to fix my arm. I wouldn't do it. I told you nicely, I think on this case, I've only seen one or two people do it adequately in my 28 year plus years on the bench and my 11 years as a lawyer. But that's neither here nor there. You have that right. The problem is here that you're abusing this system. That's what you're doing. You are abusing this system. In my view, and the court finds that the primary purpose in, in initiating this action against these lawyers in this law firm was to harass, embarrass, or injure those individuals and that law firm. You had no reasonable basis to believe that the facts underlying the party's legal position were in fact true. And I'm finding that you advanced a frivolous claim in conjunction with that counter complaint that you filed, period. I'm not gonna award it on the counterclaim versus the bank. I am going to award it award sanctions on the counterclaim that was filed against the law firm and the individual lawyers. You don't get to do this. This is not some kind of a game. We don't think this is funny. I have a great sense of humor when I'm not in here. Not in, when, not in here. This isn't some kind of an entertainment exercise. Now, the question is, what kind of sanctions are you entitled to? And that's what you're going to have to grapple with, because even though I think his conduct was outrageous, and I do think it was outrageous, and this record should reflect that this court finds the conduct was outrageous. But sanctions is a law firm entitled to when they represented themselves, Mr. Barr. Had you gone out and hired another law firm and paid them $400 an hour, a very experienced law firm, would have no difficulty in awarding recoupment of those attorney fees. The question is what kind of reasonable attorney fees is one entitled to and what types of sanctions is one entitled to when they've representing, represented themselves. So here's what you're gonna do, please. And, and it does not have to be lengthy. You can do it by Zoom, which you're gonna prepare in order granting the, the motions for summary disposition based on the grounds I stated previously, just here 10 minutes ago. Then I'd like you to file a motion. It doesn't have to be lengthy, but you're going to have to set forth what sanctions you believe that you're entitled to. To the extent that you believe that you're entitled to returning fees, the law firm can set forth how much time was expended, what their hourly rate was, and why those attorney fees would be reasonable under the circumstances. But I have to tell you, I'm going back to whether or not it's appropriate for a law firm to collect sanctions that's representing itself on a frivolous action that's filed against it. My gut says it should be. My brain says I don't know that it can be. Am I making sense? Yes, Your Honor. I, I, believe, if, I believe if there wasn't a second file coming down the pipeway, I would be amenable to walking out of this courtroom and being done with this action. Well, that's neither here nor there. I don't even know if that case is going to be assigned to me and I'll rule if it is on the facts and the law pertaining to that particular case. Um, that's up to you guys. But to the extent I'm going to grant your motion, you can put it right in there. The court finds this was a frivolous action. And uh, so your order should say order granting summary disposition on the two claims. And you can put that in. And you can also add in finding counterclaim filed versus law firm and 
lawyers was frivolous within the meaning of the statute, MCL 600.25913A, I and two, small I and small two, and that the court is directing that you file a written motion and it itemize your, um, what costs and sanctions you believe you're entitled to. And again, you're gonna to have to focus a bit on whether it's appropriate that a law firm representing itself is reimbursed. I'm not getting into whether other cases should or shouldn't be filed. I don't, like I said, I don't even know if that case is assigned to me. Um, is it, do you know? I don't. Do you know Mr. Shanley? I'm sorry. I do not know. But that's the ruling. Any clarification needed? No, Your Honor, if are you going to rule on my motion to dismiss? I'm denying it for the reasons stated. I object. I know. It's okay. You can appeal. I'm not always right, Mr. Shanley. Your Honor, I have to we have an established jurisdiction. All right. Listen, I don't want to hear it. You can take all this transcript and go to a reviewing court. I have two proposed orders. Let me see. Can I approach? Yes, you can. The top one is a proposed order dismissing the counterclaim against Bank of America. The second one is a proposed order dismissing the case with prejudice as to whoever in all season all named attorneys. Um, if, if the court wishes to exclude the sanctions portion of that. I'd prefer, I, I, I'd prefer, I'll sign your order dismissing counterclaim with prejudice versus Bank of America. I believe your honor, Weber and Olsies is not, there's a chance that we're not going to be filing the I don't, motion as to. I still want the order to reflect what happened. And this doesn't do it. Okay. So I want you to put in there the court further fines after you set forth the preamble that I'm grad that I'm granting the some I'm dismissing the count dismissing the quashing the summons and dismissing the third party slash counter complaint against the individual lawyers and the corporation that the court found that the counter plaintiffs action filed against uh, the law firm and the individual lawyers was frivolous pursuant to the meaning of 600, write that down, 600.2591. And that the court has invited the plaintiff to file, the lawyers and the law firm to file a motion for imposition of sanctions, itemizing that which they believe that they're entitled to. But, but the court would, if you're going to ask for attorney fees, and I want it right in the body of the order, the court's going to need authority to award attorney fees to a law firm that was representing itself. So that's it. I'm handing you the order on the top. You can keep the other order in the file if you'd like. And uh, that is it. Uh, Linda, uh, that's all right. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, that's okay. I got it. Okay. It's today, 13th. 